Welcome back to Goldseek TV. I'm here in Zurich with the chairman and CEO of Metallic Minerals. Uh, Greg Johnson, thank you for joining me. Hey, it's nice to be back. Hey, great to see you. It's an exciting period here with the precious metals market coming back alive compared to a year ago. Feels like a lot more energy, um, a lot more hope coming back into the sector. Obviously, the metals are, are doing quite well. Silver has had an excellent last uh, year. Um, and now we have uh, the stocks are starting to kind of revive. But uh, what is your sense of so far of the sector, uh, the conference? Are you getting, uh, are you seeing more interest in, in the mining stocks? Yeah, this is the second or third event we've done this fall. And definitely with gold hitting all time highs here, you know, recently there's been a renewed interest in our sector broadly. Um, I mean, amazingly, the majors, if we look at like the GDX ETF, which is a you know, billion market cap and larger, they have broken out of their downtrend from 2011 in the last several months, but are still like 50% below their highs from 2011 when gold price was at $1,900 compared to today at 27, right? So I think there's still a lot to go, even for the larger caps. And if you look at the venture index, which is a good benchmark for the smaller explorer developers, that was at 2,400 in 2011. Today it's at 600. So just to get back to the venture level when metals were lower than they are today, you know, you're, like, you're talking multiples as an average. And surprisingly, 2007, the venture was at 3,400. So you know, for uh, these metals are higher than those levels and the lack of interest in the sector has been a longer bear market. You know, we've seen now three lows for the, for the venture index, the first in 2016, the second in 2020, and we've just come out of the third low for the venture in 2023, 2024. So this is an amazing time actually to be looking at high quality names for the explorer developer level companies because the majors are already moving. The gold price and the silver price is already moving. Copper price is doing well. And the venture is breaking out of this 18-year downtrend line that, that's been in place and holding values low. So That's, that's a great point. You, yeah. you already have the metals running. So you have that. You don't have to worry about that. It's already the go signal. And you have a great opportunity to still get into companies that haven't really moved. Absolutely. A, a bottoming process has been taking a long, year, long, long time. Not just... This is not a, just a short-term thing. Like you said, this is a longer-term bottoming process, which is now uh, appears to be lifting up with the metal prices. So let's talk about some ex exciting precious metals, maybe more specifically silver. Yep. Um, Metallic Minerals has a very interesting project in Colorado, La uh, Plata. Um, so if you could give us a little more of an overview, what, what's so exciting about this project and what brought Newmont Mining into the company to, uh, to make an investment into Metallic? You bet. It, you know, it's an interesting district, the La Plata district. La Plata means uh, silver in Spanish, of course. It was discovered in the 1700s by Spanish explorers for its high-grade silver. Uh, and then high-grade silver and gold mines were developed in the district from that period from the 1800s all the way till the 1940s. And then, of course, the U.S. shuts down mining during World War II because it's non-essential. And in the 1950s, Rio Tinto comes into the district and says, oh, all of these high-grade silver and gold veins that are, were being mined are being driven by a porphyry system. Of course, porphyries are these intrusive hosted deposits that are often associated mostly with copper, but they oftentimes come with silver and gold and sometimes even other metals like platinum and palladium. And so in the La Plata district, Rio Tinto comes in, starts drilling in one target area because because it was a, uh, a historic district with lots of activity that was hard to develop a land position. Um, and so they had one small area that they started the drilling on, and that's our Allard resource area on our La Plata project. So um, following Rio Tinto's activity in the 50s, you had Freeport MacMoran, one of the world's largest copper companies, come in in the 70s. They drill some more. And then the project just gets held by Freeport until 2002. And so what's significant about 2002, that was the low in copper price in the last cycle. They sold it to a couple of former very astute uh, investors who then brought the project to us because our team at Metallic Minerals was part of the team that developed the Galore Creek project that was another Rio Tinto project that now is owned 50-50 by Newmont and Tech. And so our experience on that project made it a really great fit for us. We took a look at this project. It sits right near a highway. It's in between Durango and Cortez, Colorado and Southwestern Colorado. You've got infrastructure, you've got a long history of mining, but not recently. 
It's one of the biggest oil and gas producing areas of that of that state. And so there's a lot of experience with resources, but not in recent memory with with um, you know minerals. And so we're coming back in and kind of reinvigorating this this sector, this area. And we're bringing a new focus with the modern understanding of porphyry systems and how these systems are explored. And so we very quickly have gone from an acquisition with historic drilling to doing our own drilling and tabling our first billion plus pound copper resource with 18 million ounces of silver that comes along with that. And they didn't analyze for gold and platinum and palladium historically, but our drill drilling is basically showing that we're gonna get, not only are we gonna get copper and silver, but we're gonna get platinum, palladium, and gold that comes along with it. So early days, but we're getting started and we already have really a multi-billion dollar value in the ground type resource that we're working on and advancing. We released drill results in 2023 that attracted Newmont's attention. They saw in La Plata the potential that this was a system like their flagship Cadia mine down in Australia or the Red Chris mine in, in British Columbia. And so they immediately, we had a whole number of majors that were in the data room. Those guys quickly pushed to the front of the line. They were on the ground within a couple of weeks and they did a strategic investment into the company. Well, that's that, a, and, that, and that's very unusual for a large company like Newmont Senior to be investing in, in this. So they, they must be seeing some, like I said, some big potential, big size growth in, in this asset. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you'll see them go into a joint venture. You'll see them put money into projects, but to actually invest at the corporate level is really rare for these big companies. They'd rather buy it at feasibility and put it into production. But when they see something they really like, they will come in earlier. And so you know, we've been fortunate. And we're seeing more than just money. Uh, they've had some of their uh, expert mapping team working with our team on the ground this summer. We've had access to their geophysical team. They're helping us out to develop our long-term strategy in terms of our environmental engagement and community engagement on the project. So they've been really great partners. Fantastic. So you have a very strong base to work off of. Um, you've got an investment from Newmont. Uh, your approach now is to, to, to develop, expand the resource base. How, Give us a little more idea of what the... Yeah, so what's what's exciting is I mentioned early on, Newmont came into... Or, I'm sorry, uh, Rio Tinto came in early on in this one area. It's called the Allard Resource Area. But the project, we're the first to have consolidated the entire district. So for the first time really in modern history, we now control the entire mineral rights to this district. And so what quickly Newmont uh, and our geologists were uh, re recognizing was we had not just the one area that we've been drilling and, and the resource remains open at depth and a long strike. And we're seeing fantastic intercepts. We've got now six holes that are between 500 and 900 meters of continuous mineralization uh, with grades up to one and a half percent copper and up to five grams platinum, platinum and gold. So really high grades, for especially for a porphyry system. But it's just one small area on this much larger property. And so what the Newmont team has been working with our team is recognizing that we've got 20 other potential targets and those already have like soil and rock coverage. And so we're advancing those to get those to a drill ready stage for 2025. And most of those targets are those potentially other porphyry systems? Exactly. So in this model like Cadia and Red Chris, what they see is not just one porphyry, they see a whole series of porphyries in a cluster. And so this kind of system, these precious metal rich porphyries often occur as clusters. And so we've only drilled the one, we have great success with the one, but now we've got all these others that potentially have as good a signature or better uh, as we see at the resource area. Oh, that's very exciting. So this is, this is a big potential project, already has a huge base, can really grow. Obviously it has already interests of majors. So this is quite an exciting period. What's uh, your drilling? Uh, season starts up in the springtime or when we... Yeah, so our typical drill season is kind of May till December. So we're just wrapping up our uh, field programs now on the oh. project and getting prepared for a much bigger campaign to start next year. So Newmont funded the last drill program, which was 5,000 meters of, of core, and that's gone into our modeling work that we're doing now. And next year, we'll set ourselves up for at least a program of that size, if not if not larger. Fantastic. So this is a very nice asset in, in the portfolio, but this is not the only good one and very attractive, interesting one. So let's talk about Kino Hill. Um, yeah. Uh, this is in a great location. Um, tell us more about what's going on up there. Well, the Kino Hill project was our first project that really got the company started in 2016. 
Um, we came into the district saying this is one of the highest grade silver districts in the world. It's had this long history of production. And again, like La Plata, a very complex land ownership package. So over a period of several years, we accumulated 40 different parcels into basically the other half of the Kino district. Up until a couple of years ago, our neighbor was Alexco, who's a junior silver miner. They got acquired by Hecla Mining. And now it's Hecla's highest grade mine in their portfolio. They've been ramping up towards commercial production. They're projecting, um, you know, four to five million ounces of silver production a year. It makes it Canada's largest silver mine. So it's a really significant asset. And for them, longer term, if they want to continue to grow and build out the production, they're clearly going to be looking at the district. So we've effectively unitized the district. So there's Hecla's position and ours, which is almost as large as theirs. The geology continues from their ground to our ground. And over the last several years, we've taken it from early stage prospects to we have four resource areas. So we tabled our first resource on the Kino project this year. In 2024, 18 million ounces of silver, open pit and underground. And open pit is a new approach uh, in the Kino district. So mm -hmm. that could be lower cost at the same style of mineralogy. And now we're just continuing to say, we got other targets that are untested. Let's keep growing the resources we have. And now let's test some of those other ones. So this year we had drilling, surface work, geophysical work. And so that work is just getting wrapped up and we'll be able to announce it over coming months as well. Okay, lots of results coming. And then the, finally, in the portfolio, you have royalties. So if you could give us an overview, what's... Yeah. So somewhat unusual for a junior, we actually have a production royalty portfolio. So in the Klondike gold field, so you know, some of your listeners may be familiar with the historic Klondike gold rush from 1898. That district has now produced over 20 million ounces of gold from these very straightforward gold and gravel deposits. So no chemicals, no big mill, no expensive, expensive capital. They come in, they develop these open cuts, and they just wash the gold out of the gravel. So it's very low cost. Mm -hmm. And what that means is an opportunity for us as we've acquired the extension of the Klondike district to the east. This is unmined virgin Klondike gravel, and we're inviting big operators. So last year, Parker Schnabel, Gold Rush TV oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, for the Discovery Channel, developed the first pit on our ground called the Crescent Pit. So for your listeners that are familiar with that, that was our first production. This year, a second pit is being developed just upstream from that. So it was kind of a development year, but we'll have some production and it's positioning us for an even larger year of production next year. So how does this fit in with the other portfolio? Well, this is non-dilutive cash flow. This allows us to build a business run our company, and over the next several years, we've got enough room that we could have as many as 10 operators all producing gold that we just take the royalty, they do the mining, and that really helps us to be able to run our company and be able to even have some extra money towards expiration on the hard rock deposit. Fantastic, very exciting story. Greg, thank you for uh, giving us an overview. Uh, if uh, you want some more information, go to Meta Metallic Minerals. Metallic dashminerals.com okay. um, and uh, certainly people can uh, reach out to us as well on our 1-800 number. I'll we'll share that yeah. for viewers. Okay, well, thank you for your time, Greg. Look forward to uh, following up with the results coming out in the next year. Great, thank you.